This is HSC option 3, Sports Medicine. The key idea is what role do preventative actions play in enhancing the well-being of the athlete. Um, the syllabus point that we're focusing on in this video is taping and bandaging. Now I think this is probably one of the more obscure dot points in the syllabus, but nevertheless we um, uh, have to have a quick look at it just in case there is an exam question in the HSC. So the three dash points are preventative taping, taping for the isolation of injury and bandaging for immediate treatment of injury. So those first two there, preventative taping and taping for the isolation of injury. Um, the first one talks about taping to prevent injury from occurring and the second one taping for isolation of injury is when a player already has an injury and then they um, tape the injured area to prevent further injury from occurring. So let's have a look, uh, sorry, the right hand side syllabus points um, ask you to demonstrate taping and bandaging techniques and I'll have a short little video at the end to show you about that and finally evaluate the role taping plays in both the prevention and treatment of injury. So you'll be looking at those first two dash points if you're answering that question. So the first dash point is called preventative taping. Now preventative taping or sometimes referred to as strapping is used for injury prevention. For example, strapping the ankle to prevent an ankle sprain. A netballer would do this as, as it's a common injury in the game. Taping the ankle restricts the movement that it can occur, sorry, that can occur at the ankle joint. Other examples where taping for injury prevention is common include in cricket, where particularly the wicketkeeper will have their fingers taped to prevent dislocation when catching, and also in AFL where the shoulder is taped to help prevent players from dislocating their shoulder. Tape can be also used to hold in place sporting equipment that protects the body from injury, such as taping the shin pads before a game of football. The next dash point is taping for the isolation of injury. So as I explained before, this is about taping the injured area for a pre-existing injury, so the injury doesn't worsen during um, an athletic performance or a game. Now this method of taping is used when an athlete has a pre-existing injury and they use the taping to restrict undue movement at the injured area. Now when the, injury, sorry, when the injured area is taped, it can also help to give the athlete added confidence that the injury is supported. For example, Jonathan Thurston tapes his shoulder before each game to restrict his movement at the shoulder to prevent dislocation. This is an injury that he has suffered on numerous occasions. The final dash point is bandaging for the immediate treatment of injury. Now bandaging is the compression part of RISA and RISA is the treatment that is used for most sporting injuries. It stands for rest, ice, compression, elevation and referral. But for this instance we're focusing on compression. When bandaging or compression is done it should be tight without being so tight that it restricts blood flow. Also, bandaging can also be used in the immediate treatment of a laceration or cut. Bandaging of the cut will apply direct pressure and do this for at least 10 minutes. I'm going to finish this video with a student learn to right hand side syllabus question that says demonstrate taping and bandaging techniques including taping the ankle, wrist and thumb and the example I've got here is taping the ankle. Now I'm going to talk about some of the basic principles of taping while you can watch this video. Um, the first thing is to ensure both the athlete and the individual applying the tape are in a comfortable position. Some players, especially those with more hairy legs, might appreciate the under tape being used before applying the, the adhesive strapping tape. One of the first steps is applying the anchor. This is the starting and finishing point for all tape that is applied. The athlete may be in considerable pain, so care needs to be taken. One way of doing this is the individual who is strapping should pull the tape from the roll and not stick it to the limb and then pull the tape from the roll. If the tape is too tight, circulation can be restricted. If it's too loose, the taping will be ineffective. To help work out if the tape is tight enough, ask the athlete regularly during the taping process. When applying the second layer of tape, Overlay the previous application by half the width of the tape. Remove the tape after training or competition. This brings an end to this dot point. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you need further information, 
you should be seeking out your textbook or talking to your teacher. For more Year 12 information, you can find it at www.coachpdhpe.com.